I'd like to welcome everyone once again, Alabaster Church of Christ Worship Service. Glad to have everyone uh, with us today. And again, I say welcome and thank you for, uh, for being with us today. And again, we'll continue to pray for everyone that's sick, not feeling well, is going in for surgeries, going in for tests. We pray for all of those people that they, uh, they can get their normal health and strength. We continue to pray uh, for them. <clears throat> And ask the, ask the good Lord to continue to watch over them to help the doctors uh, return those uh, back to their normal health and strength if it be his will. And also we'll continue to pray for all the families also that have lost loved ones. We'll continue to pray for all of those families, if you will. Today's lesson, church, is entitled Submission to God. Submission to God is today's lesson. We'll be reading some of the scriptures from Luke chapter 22, verses 39 through 46 and throughout the scriptures and throughout the Bible. Submission. What is submission? <clears throat> submission is to submit under authority or power of what? Someone else. That's what submission is. To submit under the authority or power of someone else. Or just the will of God. Hope you have your Bibles with you today. So we're going to travel through the scriptures. Today, James chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Listen what the Bible said. But he giveth more grace, the Bible said. Wherefore, he said, God resisted, he said, the proud. That's what he said. Resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. The Bible says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. That's what he said. Read. Submit yourselves. Therefore to God and resist the devil. And he will do what? Flee. He said from you. Ain't that something? How simple is that? If you want the devil to flee. The Bible says submit yourself therefore to God. And resist the devil. And the Bible said he will do what? Flee from you. According to the Bible. See God. Treats us with much greater kindness. Just as the scripture said. God opposes. Everyone who is proud. He is kind to everyone, he said, who is humble. Surrender. That's the magical word. Surrender to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. He will run from you. If you do that. If you do like he says, he will flee. Submit to God. Listen. We must follow the orders. The two commands in this verse. First, we must submit to God by abandoning, listen, our self is pride. We need to abandon our selfish pride. Submit to the Lord. Also involves putting on the whole armor. Listen, church, of God. That's what it means. Putting on the whole armor, listen, of God. An image that includes everything from placing our faith in him and immersing ourselves in the truth of God's word. Read a little bit about that Ephesian Chapter 6, verses 11 through 18. Look what I just said. Place.
is in our faith in him immersing ourselves in the truth of God's word. Second, we must resist, listen, any temptation. Church, listen to me. Must resist any temptation that the devil throws our way. Did you hear me? Any temptation that he throws at you. Resist. Then the evil one will have no choice. Listen. He will have no choice but to flee. Ain't that something? For he will belong. For we will belong to the Almighty of the living God. If you do that, you will belong, the Bible said, to the army of the living God. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 through 23. Listen what the Bible say. The Bible says, submit yourself one to another in the fear of the Lord. It also said, why, listen, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the Savior, listen, of the body. Honor Christ and put others first. Did you hear me? Honor Christ. Put others first. A wife should put her husband first. Ain't that something? As she does the Lord. A husband is the head of the wife. As Christ is the head and the Savior, listen, of the church. Which is his own body. That's what we're talking about today. Submission to God. Romans chapter 8, verses 7 through 9. Listen what the Bible say, church. Because the kernel mind, the Bible said, is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then that are in the flesh cannot do what? Please God according to the Bible. Those in the flesh can't please God. But ye are not, listen, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God, listen, dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, listen, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, the Bible said, he's none of his. Ain't that something? How simple is that? See, our desires fight against God. Listen to me. Our desires, I said, fight against God. Because they do not and cannot obey laws. That's why. If we follow our desires, we cannot please God. According to the Bible. You are no longer ruled by desires. You are no longer ruled. By desires. But by God's spirit. Who lives in you. People who don't have the spirit of Christ in them. Don't belong. Listen. To him. Like I told you before. It's not but two choices. The Lord or the devil. And you can choose your own destiny. Only two choices. 
So and so I straddle the fence. You can't do it. The Bible says either you are with him or uh, with me or against. There's no straddling the fence. There's no in between. Either you're on the left or the right. Make a choice. Make a pick. That's your choice. See, listen, church. Christians no longer live according to the flesh. They no longer live according to the flesh. Under the, under the control of the sinful human nature. Ain't that something? Instead, with the Spirit living in them and empowering them, they can live in a way that's what? Pleasing to God. They can live in a way that's pleasing to God. If God's Spirit, and listen, church, is within them, they can please God. If the spirit is not in them, they're pleasing the devil. Just that simple. Just that straightforward. Just that simple. No other way. And there's no other source. First Peter chapter 5, verses 5. Listen what the Bible says. Likewise, ye younger, listen. Submit yourselves unto the what? To the elder, according to the Bible. Yea, all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, he says, and giveth grace, he says, to the humble. All of you young people should obey your elders. That's what he said. In fact, everyone should be humble, listen, Towards everyone else. The scripture says. God opposes. Proud people. But he helps everyone who is humble. He said he helps everyone. Church that he says. That's humble. That's what he. That's what he says. Talking about today. Submission. To God. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 7. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says, Remember them which have rule over you, he says, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith, he says, follow, considering the end of their conversation. Don't forget about the leaders who taught you, he said, God's message. Remember what kind of life they lived and try to have faith like theirs. Remember those teaching that they taught you. Ain't that something? It wasn't something of their own. It was something that they come from the Lord. Through them. And he said live and try to have faith he said. Like theirs. Luke chapter 22. 39 through 46. Listen what the Bible says. He came out the Bible said and went. As he won't. Of the Mount Olives. And his disciples, the Bible said, also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said, Listen, church, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not, he said, into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast according to the Bible. Bible said that he kneeled down, he said, and prayed. Listen, 
what he prayed. He said, Father, he said, if thou be willing, he said, if, praying to his father, said, if thou be willing, he said, remove, he said, remove this cup from me. He said, nevertheless, he said, not my will. He said, he says, not my will. He said, but thy be done. And there appeared, the Bible said, an angel unto him from heaven, according to the Bible, strengthening him. The Bible went a little farther than it said. And being in agony, he said, he prayed more earnestly. The Bible said, and his sweat, the Bible said, was that, was that it were drops of blood falling down, he said, to the ground. He said, was like drops of blood, he said, falling down to the ground. The Bible said when he rose up from the prayer and was called to his disciples, he found them, he said, sleeping for sorrow. And he said unto them, he said, he said, why sleep ye? He said, why sleep ye? He said, arise, he said, and pray. Lest ye enter, he said, into, listen, temptation. He said, rise and pray. We understand at this point, Jesus went out to the Mount of Olives as he often did. Bible said that his disciples' church went with him. When they got there, he told them again, he said, pray that you won't be tested. He said, pray that you won't be tested. The Bible say that Jesus walked on a little way before. Then he knelt down and prayed. Walk. Well, a little farther, then he said that he knelt down, he said, and he and he prayed. He told him, said, remember what he told him, said that he said, Father, he said, if you will, he said, Father, if you will. Please, he said, don't make me suffer by having a drink, he said, this cup. Don't make me drink, Father, of this cup. He said, but do what you want, he said, but do what you want, Father. That's what he said. He said, not but I won't. The Bible said, then an angel from heaven came, listen church, to heaven. It's an angel came to heaven. Jesus was in great pain and prayed so sincerely that his sweat fell to the ground like drops, church, of blood. Jesus, the Bible said, got up from praying, he said, and went over, he said, he went over to his disciples. The Bible goes a little farther and said that they were asleep and worn out from being so sad, being. So sad. And he said to them, he said, why? Listen, church, he said, why are you sleep? 
while you sleep, he said. He told them a little while, he told them, said, wake up. Pray that you won't, he said, be tested. Oh, ain't that something? The Bible said his sweat became like drops of blood. His sweat became like drops of blood. Jesus' earnest prayer and emotion led to a physical reaction. Church, are you listening to me? Though Jesus probably did not bleed here, but his sweat, according to the Bible, became like blood. Didn't say it was blood. It said like blood. Oh, ain't that something? That's what we're talking about today, church. Submission to God. Church, you must know Jesus set an example for us to follow. Submission to God. He said, if it be thy will, remove this cup, he said. From me. He said, but not my will. He said, not my will. He said, but let your will, he said, be done. Church, that's a mission. Ain't that something? That's a mission. That's an example that our Lord and Savior left for us to follow. Are we ready to submit? Totally. Or are we just talking about it? That's submission. That's what that is. First Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. The Bible said, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he might exalt you in what? In due time. Casting all your cares, he said, upon him. The Bible said, for he cared for you. Be humble, he said, in the presence of God's mighty power. And he will honor you, he said, when the time comes. God cares for you. So turn all your worries over to him. Some will say, I give just a little worries and I got to have something to worry about. Say, I'm going to give him some of them because I need to worry about some of them. Ain't that something? The Bible says you turn all your worries over to him. Let him help you. Turn all your worries over to him. Let him rescue you. Turn all your worries to him. Let him lift you up when you're down. Oh, ain't that something? Turn them all over to him. Try him and see won't it work. Ain't that something? Try him and see. Quit trying to solve stuff on your own. Ask him to help you. Oh, he'll do it. Ain't that something? The Bible said, turn them all over to him. All the worries. He can handle it. We can't handle it. He can. Give them to him and try him. Casting all your cares upon him. See, we need to present all our worries, anxieties, problems to God in order to let him do what? Handle them. He can handle them. 
but sometimes we're too scared to, 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 to try it. Put him on him. Let him test him and see. Won't he do it? Take some of the worries off of you. Put them on our Lord's shoulder. Oh, he can carry them. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7. Romans 13, 1 through 7. Still talking about submission to God. The Bible says, Romans 13, 1 through 7. Let every soul be subject unto what? The high power. For there is no power, listen, the Bible said, but of God. The powers that are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God, and that that resist shall receive themselves, the Bible said, damnation. For the rulers are not terror of good works. But to the evil, wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise, the Bible said, the same. For he is the minister of God, and thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, he said, what? Be afraid, if you do what is evil. He said, be afraid, for he bath not a sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that what doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must need to be subject not only for wrath, but also for the conscience sake, according to the Bible. For this call pay ye tribute also. For they are God's minister attending continually upon everything. Listen. Rendering therefore to all their duties, tribute, tri tribute to whom tribute is due, according to the Bible. Custom to whom custom, and fear to whom fear. And he said, honor to whom honor. That's what he said. That's what he was talking about. Honor the rulers who have authority over you, is what he said. Only God can give authority to anyone. And let that sink in. Only God can give authority to anyone. And he puts those rulers in the place of power. People who oppose the authority are opposing what God has done. And they will, the Bible said, will be punished. Rulers are a threat to what? To evil people. Church, did you hear me? Rulers are a threat to evil people and not to good people. There's no need to be afraid of authorities. Ain't that something? There's no need to be afraid of authority. You got some Christians scared of the police and haven't done anything. What you afraid of them for? You must have something to be afraid of if you're scared of them. Ain't that something? Now, if you run a red light or done something wrong and they pull up behind you, you know you got to be scared to, scared to death. But why should you be afraid you haven't done anything? Ain't that something? There's no need to be afraid of authorities. The Bible said, just do right. Just do right. And they will praise you for it. After all, they are God's servants. And it is their duty to do what to help you. And if you do something wrong, you ought to be afraid. Remember? If you do something wrong, you ought. The Bible said, you ought to be afraid. Because their rulers have the right, listen, to punish you. Ain't that something? They have the right to punish you. They are God's servants who punish criminals to show how angry God is. But you should obey the rulers because you know it is the right thing to do. And not just because of God's anger. 
You must also pay your taxes. The authorities are God's servant. And it is their duty to take care of these matters. Pay all that you owe. Whether it is taxes or fees. Or respect. Or, un or respect and honor. That's what we're talking about today. Submission to God today church. Submission to God. See, God. The supreme sovereign. Has ordained. That there should be governing what authorities. Every believer is to be subject to these various authorities. Even if these authorities are evil as Nero. Back in AD 54 and 68, the emperor of Rome who cruelly persecuted Christians. Oh my goodness. See, when Paul wrote this letter, Nero was in power. Yet Paul exhorted the Roman believers to submit to Nero's authority because that authority was what? Ordained, listen, by God himself. See, judgment does not necessarily include e eternal punishment. God may judge people through human authority. He, he appoints. Ain't that something? See, the word is an instrument of death. Or the sword is an instrument of death. Government has the right in the proper circumstances to impose capital punishment as the will, as the wage to war. In Paul's day, the common method of capital punishment was decapitation, listen, with a sword. Ain't that something? We're talking about today, church, uh, submission to God. See, then it said, for conscience sake, believers must obey the government, not only because it is their what civic duty, but because it is their spiritual duty before God. That's what we're talking about, church. We're talking about submission to God. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Listen what the Bible says. Finally, my brother, and he said, be strong, he said, in the Lord. And in the power of his might, put on the whole armor, listen, of God. That's what it said. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against, listen, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, he said. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take ye unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your lawns girt about with truth. And having a breastplate, he said, of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Then he said, above all, he said, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet, he said, of salvation. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Did you hear me? The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with power, with prayer, and supplication in the Spirit. And watching therein, thereunto with all perseverance and supplications, he said, for all saints. Let the mighty strength, is what he said, church, of the Lord make you strong. That's what he said. Let it make you strong. 
Put on all the armor that God's give. Put on all the armor so you can defend yourself against the devil's trick. That's the only way you're going to defend yourself against the devil's trick, by putting on the whole armor of God. We're not fighting against humans. We're fighting against forces and authority, against the rulers of darkness and the powers in the spiritual world. So put on all armor that God gives. Then the evil, when the evil day comes, you'll be able, listen, to do what? To defend yourself. And when the battle is over, listen, church, you must be standing for him. Be ready to let the truth be like a belt around your waist. He said, let the truth be like a belt around your waist. And let God justice protect you, he said, like a shield. And you will be able to stop all the flaming arrows of the what? Of the evil one. Let God's saving power be your helmet. And the sword, and the sword use God's message that comes from the Spirit. Never stop praying, church. Never stop praying, especially for others. Always pray by the power, listen, of the Spirit. Stay alert and keep praying for God's people. Keep praying and putting on the whole, listen, church, the armor of God. Down towards the end, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Listen what the Bible says. Trust in the Lord, is what he said. He said, trust in the Lord. Echoes the command around Deuteronomy chapter 6, bus, uh, Deuteronomy 6, 5. To love God with all our being. Verb trust is complemented by the verb lean. Ain't that something? And again, it says, trust in the law with all thine heart. Lean not unto our what? Own understanding. In all thy ways, he said, do what? Acknowledge him. And he shall direct what? Your path. With all your heart, you must trust the Lord. Listen, with all your heart, he said to do what? Trust the Lord and not your own judgment. Always let him lead you and he will clear the road for you to follow. Oh, ain't that something? And again, the word trust in the Lord echoes the command back in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 5. To love God with all your being. The verb trust comes Complimented by the verb lean. Again, trusting in God is a conscious demand on God. Which like leaning on a tree for support. Ain't that something like leaning on a tree, listen, for support. Ain't that something? The, 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 vibe, the idea is reinforced by the command to knowledge, acknowledge him. That's the command. By acknowledging what? By acknowledging him. Which means to observe him and get to know him in the process of living. And doing so, a person finds time and time again that God smooths out paths. Church, that's the lesson today. Entitled submission to God. And I hope today that you can understand submission to God. And one that like to become a Christian today. Five things you must do to become a Christian. First, you must hear the word. Romans 10, 14. How then shall they call on him of whom they have not believed? And how shall believe in him of whom they have not heard? 
And how should they heal without a preacher? Romans 10, 14. Next, you must believe. Believe what you have heard. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a reward of them that visually seek him. And again, Hebrews 11, 6. Next, you must repent. Repent means change. Have another mind in respect to sin. Acts 17, 30. And at the time of this ignorance, God winked. But now commanded all men everywhere to repent. He's not overlooking it anymore. And he's not winking anymore. We must repent and we must change. Next, you must confess. Confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Acts chapter 8, verses 36 and 37, which will bring you down to Philip and the eunuch. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believe it with all thine heart, they may it. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Next, you must be baptized. Down in the water, all who believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verses 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Baptized. Greek word meaning immerse, dip, bear a person where under water. Nowhere around baptism. You must be baptized. It's how do you contact the blood? Only way to contact the blood is going down into the water. Church, that's the lesson. And again, I hope and pray that I said something that will help each and every one of us understand submission to God. And let us go into a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to have the service today. Father, hope and pray that we said something that will help each and every one of us go closer to thee. Father, I continue to pray that all the churches preach and teach the same thing so that we're not be any divisions in your church. Father, we must understand that we can't add to or we can't take away from your word. We've got to preach it in season and out of season. Preach it when they want and preach it when they don't. Father, we ask you to continue to watch over all the churches throughout this land and country, keeping all the churches safe. Father, continue to pray for all the ones that are sick, not feeling well, in the hospital. Father, we ask you to keep a hand above them and help the doctors return all of them back to their normal health and strength, if it be thy will. We continue to pray for all the ones that have lost loved ones. We ask you to continue to stand by those families and lift them up for they're so torn. Father, we continue to pray for this church and let's continue to do in your will of pleasing you and not man. Father, we ask you to let us continue to be the love and care, concern, people that we need to be towards one to another. Father, we must understand we'd like to set up on the hill that everyone can see what we're doing. Father, and only this church, we ask you to watch over all churches throughout this land and country. Be with all the ones, Father, that's traveling up and down these dangerous highways. Father, we ask you to be with all of those people. And let them make it to their destination safe and sound. And Father, we ask you to continue to be the Father that you are to your children. In Jesus, mother, blessed Christ, Jesus' name we pray. Amen.